What's up, dude? Hello, everybody. I know it's late for me to be getting a video out to you guys, but once again, today I had some more friends in from out of town. Well, I shouldn't say like more in from out of town. Same kind of group of friends in from out of town for a wedding that we were all in and I really wanted to enjoy being with them and hanging out with them as well. So I'm getting back to this video just a little bit late but I hope that it's a good one. Whoa, I don't know what that was. I hope it's a good one. Um, this is one that a subscriber has sent in to me. I have heard of this before. I think I read about it on BuzzFeed or something. So I'm really hoping that I can give you a good rundown of it. This is a hard story because the story changes quite a bit. Um, but I think that you guys will find this one very, very fascinating. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Alicia Estelle Head was born on January 31st, 1973 in Barcelona, Spain. Her family was prominent in the area, but in 1992, she, her dad, and her brother were all involved in a financial scandal and served prison time. I'm not totally sure what that scandal was about, but it just kind of sets the tone for the story, I feel like. She told friends when like she was younger that she grew up riding pedigree Arabian stallions on her family farm in Ma um oh I know I can pronounce this but looking at it I can't Mallorca. She also frequently would tell her friends about like wealthy boyfriends that she had but they just would mysteriously never meet her friends. It was very odd. It's kind of like saying you have a boyfriend that goes to another school. Alicia went to the University of Barcelona and worked at a Spanish hotel company. And then from 1998 to 2000, she worked in Barcelona as a management security security secretary. Apparently, I can't read anymore. While enrolled in a master's degree program at ESADE, I think it's like ESAID. When she was about 28 years old, she moved to Manhattan and changed her name to Tanya. I don't know why she did that, but I'm still going to refer to her as Alicia because that's her name. By all accounts, it seemed like Alicia's life was going great. No issues, right? However, on September 11th, 2001, her life took a major change. She was in the South Tower on the 78th floor when the second plane hit the World Trade Center. Alicia's arm was severely burned and unfortunately her fiance, Dave, was killed in the North Tower because he worked there. She was one of only 19 people who survived above the point of impact, so like the plane crashed here she was up above it now in some accounts she says that she remembered seeing the wing of the plane slice through the building like a knife she saw her secretary decapitated um in some you know tellings of the story she's very open about it later on um alicia said that she passed a dying man who gave her his wedding ring to return to his wife Wells Crowther, whose own like survival story was read widely reported on uh, in the media, and he helped Alicia out of the tower. After the events of 9-11, Alicia joined the World Trade Center Survivors Network in 2004. When one of the founders of the group heard about an online support group for 9-11 survivors started by Tanya Head, he decided to reach out and the two eventually merged their groups. The merged group helped survivors get support for the trauma that they went through. You know, just being able to visit with other people who understand your pain and trauma can be very therapeutic. Alicia was never paid for her work with the Survivors Network, but she herself would donate to the group fairly frequently. I don't know exactly how much, but she did make contributions. Alicia would be a part of tour groups at Ground Zero and would tell her story. She would say, I was there at the towers. I'm a survivor. I'm going to tell you about that. I was working in the World Trade Center in the 96th floor. And when, when you were up there, you really felt empowered. Like you really had achieved something in life. I was flying through the air. That's, that's what I was doing from the impact. We had all been through horrible things, but Tanya's was just heading shoulders above anything else that any of us had gone through. I was smelling my own skin burning. She was telling her story. I mean, you can feel your heart ache. And I started crawling over people who were 
burnt from head to toe, who were cut up, and I was I was trying to help them. Here's this person who went through so much that who in the world could possibly survive this? Yes, she's a survivor. Here she is, she's a survivor. It's our duty to, to remember those who are no longer here. It's a duty to, to do something with our survivor experience. This is Tanya. She's also a survivor and she's also one of my best friends. She was part of many articles about the September 11th attacks as well. In America, it's a very big deal because it's like the biggest terrorist attack we've ever had to endure. Um, so a lot of people find it to be very fascinating to learn more about it. I'm definitely one of those people. I got to hear a firefighter who got trapped under the rubble of the building talk about his story. He wrote a book. I read the book. I thought it was great. Then I, after that, I got to go and listen to him speak. He was an incredible speaker. It was such a fascinating story. So I'm not surprised that like Alicia, since she was so willing to talk about her experience, that she was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll talk to newspapers. I'll talk to reporters. I'll talk to like news outlets, news channels, like TV shows, you know, stuff like that. In September 2007, the New York Times wanted to fact check her story before they published like an anniversary piece about the attacks. Alicia claimed in her story that she had a degree from Harvard and Stanford. So then like when the reporter went back to fact check it and just get more info, turns out neither of these institutions have any record of her attending. Her reason for being in the tower when it was hit was because she was working at Merrill Lynch in the South Tower, but there's actually no record of her employment there. And also, there were no offices for Merrill Lynch in the World Trade Center at the time of the attacks. They weren't even in the building. By September 27th, the network voted in favor of removing her as the president and director of the group. The first time she had even been to the US wasn't until 2003. Alicia's fiance, Dave, he really was a man that was killed in the attacks, um, but his family had never heard of Tanya Head, ever. In all reality, Alicia was actually in class at ESAID in Barcelona when the attacks happened. She had been telling her classmates that she had scarred her arm from a car accident or a horse riding accident depending on the day. So she really did have scarring on her arm and they were burns. So that made her story seem more true and more likely to have happened because it seemed like if you have scarring like that on your arm and you say that's what it's from, why would anybody like question you? After Alicia was found to be a fraud, she quickly moved out of New York and she quit doing interviews. In 2008, an anonymous letter was sent to the World Trade Center Survivors Network claiming that Alicia had committed suicide. However, this also was found to be totally false. There is a documentary and a book both titled The Woman Who Wasn't There talking about Alicia's story from before and after she was found out to be a fraud. So if you guys want to go watch that, seriously, go do. I believe I've seen it. I think I've watched it. I've seen so many documentaries that like I don't even remember what I've seen or not. In 2021, Alicia opened a renovation company in Barcelona and she was pictured there on September 8th. So that's kind of what she's been up to of late, I guess. Her story, like her retelling of her story really is crazy. The fact like she'll add things to it, she'll take things away from it, just depending on like who she's telling. It's wild. But seriously, if you guys get a chance to watch that documentary, I seriously recommend it. However, that is it for me today. I hope you guys found this to be interesting. I for sure did. You could do a ton more reading about it as well and learn more, but it's very hard to get all the facts together because she changed her story so frequently. So it's kind of hard to pin it all together, if that makes sense. But I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you get outside, touch some grass. You're going to have a great day tomorrow, sweetie. Um, but yeah, come back and still watch one of my videos on Wednesday. Bye, guys.